do it. One of your favorite players, the big O, Oscar Robertson, he got a lot of triple doubles in his day, and he said that Russell Westbrook got so many triple doubles, did not get enough respect, and he should have been the MVP last year. Who do you think should have been the MVP? Do you, you know, I honor anything that Big O says, like it's gospel. So I'm going to bow down and pay homage to the legend. Usually, who wins MVP is a reflection of their team in the rankings. Like Steph Curry, I had him third or fourth in the MVP race, and they didn't make the playoffs. You're not getting much higher than that, regardless of your terrific individual season. When Russ did win MVP the year he averaged a triple-double for the first time, they were sixth in the Western Conference, and he still got it. So when you're putting up a triple-double, this is nothing to be taken for granted. I know a lot of people watch the game and feel like, oh, okay, Russ is gonna get a triple-double, take it for granted. Don't take this for granted. He's supersizing these triple-doubles. This is a level of history that we probably will not see. An athletic guy that's a primary ball handler that can lead a team in rebounds and assists, but also score the basketball. He's led this league in scoring before, has Russell Westbrook. So I understand what the big O is saying. Don't take this for granted. I agree with you. One thing I really want to agree with you about is the supersized triple doubles. Like, he's not barely getting these triple doubles. We're talking like 15 assists, 14 rebounds, 25 <laughs> points. What he did at the end of the season for the Wizards was just, it was a great run. It was an amazing run at the end of the season last year. One of the reasons that the playing tournament should stay. I agree with Big O. He does not get enough respect. He does get overlooked. He does deserve to be celebrated. However, he's not the MVP. We know he's not the MVP. I mean, he's, he's not. Uh, maybe, maybe number five, <laughs> number six, if I had a vote. But he's not the MVP. But Oscar Robertson is one of the best to do it. And he is upping the value of the triple-double. I see what he's doing. He's upping the value of the triple-double because he has so many in his career. Jalen, sometimes you say things on this program. It's like, it's like you predict the future. We call it broken news here at J&J. To everyone else, it's breaking news. To Jalen and Jacoby listeners, it's broken news. Jalen, previously you had this update on Imani Bates' college game. Anymore. As you know, Brian is one of the best players to play this game. Um, and his, his ability to be able to kind of do everything on the floor um, allows me to be able to just figure it out. Um, I'm coming to a championship caliber team and my job is to make sure that I'm able to make his game easy for him um, and I'll find ways to do that throughout the game. Jalen, ever since this deal was made with the Wizards to bring Westbrook to Los Angeles to join LeBron, there's been so much discussion about his fit with the team. How do you think he will fit with this team? I love this and you know how much I love Russ. You fit in anywhere when you average a triple-double for a season, ladies and gentlemen. News flash. That's what he did last year. I just wish the late great Nipsey Hussle would be there to see Russ play in the purple and gold. Because remember when he passed, the kind of numbers that he put up when he played against the Lakers, the 20-20-20. If you know, you know. With that being said, Russ is just a sign of maturity, Jacoby. Like, mm. as you start to get older, you remember when we used to be mean mugging in the 90s? You know what I'm saying? And you walk around with your fist balled up all of the time? That didn't mean you could fight more. That didn't mean you was tougher. That just meant you were me mugging. And then as you started to get older, you're like, I ain't gotta necessarily do that to get my point across. And that's how Russ is approaching this situation. He's been an MVP of the league. Early in his career, he's played in the NBA Finals. He's played with some of the best players in the game. Harden, KD, Paul George, Sabonis, and so, Bradley Beal, now LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And so he's been a chameleon in a lot of ways. And this comes full circle. I remember when Russ was in college. And do you realize he basically averaged nine points mm -hmm. for his college career? And now all of a sudden, he's a guy that's breaking the big O's triple-double record in the NBA. He's going to help the Lakers in particular when LeBron's off the floor. And when LeBron and or AD are in street clothes, that's why you bring in Russ, because he doesn't play like your normal guard that's in his low 30s. Absolutely. Now, we always say the best players you put around LeBron James are rim-protecting big and 
3 and D people shooting. You want shooting around LeBron because he's such a maestro with the basketball. I think a lot of people just point to Russell Westbrook's lack of a jump shot, but here's the thing. He averages a triple-double. He gets you 10 <laughs> assists, 10 rebounds, and at least 10 points every single game. And they did bring in Malik Monk who can shoot, and Kendrick Nunn can shoot. Like, they do have Carmelo. some shooting around him. Carmelo, great point. He's a catch-and-shoot guy now in his career, basically. But that second unit, with LeBron is on and off the floor, they're such a different team team last year that the addition of Russell Westbrook is really going to help that. When you look at those numbers, I think this is one of the main motivating factors to bring Russ in, don't you? And also, you know how much I love this sound. He's going to bring speed. Just mm -hmm. sure volume of pace changing ends of the floor. Some of LeBron's best plays in transition with the Lakers he was out in transition with Caruso. That's why a lot of people were surprised they let him go, a young ascending player, because he played faster and got out in transition and matched LeBron. That's what Russ is gonna be doing. There are gonna be times where the Lakers get the ball in bounds, and Russ is gonna be laying the ball up with less than four seconds on the other end of the court. That's what he's gonna bring, and a relentless competitive spirit. Yep. It is that competitive spirit, and that analysis you just gave us was so on point, but there's one thing that I strongly disagree with. Russell Westbrook is still going to be mean-mugging. He's still going to be mean-mugging. <laughs> That's the attitude that he plays with when he is on the floor. He just mean-mugs. That's his default setting when he's playing basketball. Big shout out to Russell Westbrook and the Lakers. I, for one, definitely think this is going to be a good fit, and they will win the Western Conference if healthy. Brody. However, the man that he is replacing, Dennis... I wasn't necessarily mad at it. And then I thought about why, and it totally makes sense. I want to remind you something. Okay. There's a valedictorian walking the face of the earth representing the king of the court in the NBA. You know what his name is? Giannis the Greek Freak Attentacupo. You saw what he just did in the finals? Yes, did I did. Did you see what he just did in the finals? Yes, I did. You saw yes, Chris did. Middleton make a name for himself as a closer? You seen Drew Holiday getting steals and locking down on D? You know they play in the Eastern Conference also, right? Which mm -hmm. means... 50 of their games are going to be against Eastern Conference foes. So therefore, they're number two because they're going to have a better regular season record than today your Los Angeles Lakers. Now, for the Nets, they write where they should be. The Bucks are as well. And don't be so upset about the Lakers not being one or two. You just want them healthy at their Western Conference three seed or so when the playoffs start. If you consider that all of the players are available and healthy, the Lakers have a better roster than the Bucs. And you mentioned the Nets at number one. You remember, I'm old enough to remember, the Nets and the Bucks went to overtime in game seven and Kyrie mm. wasn't even on the floor. The Lakers were one of the best teams in the Western Conference last year, regardless of record. They dealt with some injuries, and they added Russell Westbrook. They added a lot of other interesting pieces, too, like Malik Monk and Dwight Howard. They are going to dominate in the Western Conference, and they're also going to rest a lot. You know that LeBron James brought in <laughs> Westbrook, so he said, you know what? I'll play about 70 yeah. games. I'll play about 70 games this year, and I'll give 12 just to Russ so he can score 30 and get the 15 assists and 15 rebounds. We know that's going to happen. Jalen Rose, would you, in your personal power rankings put the Bucks ahead of the Lakers yes for the reasons I just told you they play in the East they they are a younger group which means they're gonna value the regular season more their best player Giannis is extremely durable and dominant he's only gonna get better you saw him making free throws okay that's just gonna add to his arsenal and so yes the power rankings got it right on that one and, and you know what else I can't wait to see a full season of the Nets we only saw them mm -hmm. less than 20 games last year. And you mentioned KD, the offseason salutatorian, the way he played in the playoffs and then the way he played in the Olympics. But a healthy Kyrie and obviously James Harden starting the season in shape, that's going to be a marvel to watch. Absolutely. It does feel like we are on a collision course like we were with the Cavs and the Warriors years between the Nets and the Lakers. And what a finals that would be. But there's ever since the 76ers lost in the playoffs, Ben Simmons has been the person. He's been the person, the lightning rod for criticism that everyone is pointing to as the problem for the 76ers. He reportedly does not have contact with the team this offseason. 
Is there a chance, do you believe, that Ben Simmons will not report to camp? Could he hold out? Or would, could this be like a James Harden situation? What do you think the future is with Simmons and the Sixers? I think ultimately he ends up at camp. It's not in either side's best interest for him not to be at camp. It's definitely not in his best interest to do what James Harden did and that show up and be out of shape because he's not a former MVP like James Harden is. So with that being said, I don't believe this deal happens this offseason, Jacoby. Now, the way you and I believe in Ben Simmons, we can't ignore the bizarre fourth quarter performances in the playoffs this year. And so he's going to have to build that value back up. If I'm on the phone with you and you talk about give me a player and give me like two or three first round picks, not after that series. Like, we mm. saw the Paul George deal, the Drew Holiday deal. Like, there have been deals where multiple picks got exchanged, but not when they passing up layups in front of Trey Young at the hoop. So he's going to have to build his value back up. They're not going to want to move him for less. So don't be surprised if this goes into training camp, if it goes into the season before he's actually moved. Well, we will see what happens. I do believe he does get moved, but he might start the season on the 76ers. And every single August, I see the same thing, Jalen Rose. I see Ben Simmons on Instagram making three-pointers. Every single <laughs> August, he is on the gram making three-pointers. I wouldn't mind if he actually did that during the season because obviously unlocking a jump shot and his confidence internally and externally on the perimeter is important for him moving forward. Ever since the 76ers lost in the playoffs, Ben Simmons has been the person. He's been the person, the lightning rod for criticism that everyone is pointing to as the problem for the 76ers. He reportedly does not have contact with the team this offseason. Is there a chance, do you believe, that Ben Simmons will not report to camp? Could he hold out? Or would, could this be like a James Harden situation? What do you think the future is with Simmons and the Sixers? I think... Ultimately, he ends up at camp. It's not in either side's best interest for him not to be at camp. It's definitely not in his best interest to do what James Harden did and that show up and be out of shape because he's not a former MVP like James Harden is. So with that being said, I don't believe this deal happens this offseason, Jacoby. Now, the way you and I believe in Ben Simmons, we can't ignore the bizarre fourth quarter performances in the playoffs this year. And so he's going to have to build that value back up. If I'm on the phone with you and you talk about give me a player and give me like two or three first round picks, not after that series. Like we mm. saw the Paul George deal, the Drew Holiday deal. Like there have been deals where multiple picks got exchanged, but not when they passing up layups in front of Trey Young at the hoop. So he's going to have to build his value back up. They're not going to want to move him for less. So don't be surprised if this goes into training camp, if it goes into the season before he's actually moved. Well, we will see what happens. I do believe he does get moved, but he might start the season on the 76ers. And every single August, I see the same thing, Jalen Rose. I see Ben Simmons on Instagram making three-pointers. Every single <laughs> August, he is on the gram making three-pointers. I wouldn't mind if he actually did that during the season because obviously unlocking a jump shot and his confidence internally and externally on the perimeter is important for him moving forward. Ever since the 76ers lost in the playoffs, Ben Simmons has been the person. He's been the person, the lightning rod for criticism that everyone is pointing to as the problem for the 76ers. He reportedly does not have contact with the team this offseason. Is there a chance, do you believe, that Ben Simmons will not report to camp? Could he hold out? Or would, could this be like a James Harden situation? What do you think the future is with Simmons and the Sixers? I think... Ultimately, he ends up at camp. It's not in either side's best interest for him not to be at camp. It's definitely not in his best interest to do what James Harden did and that show up and be out of shape because he's not a former MVP like James Harden is. So with that being said, I don't believe this deal happens this offseason, Jacoby. Now, the way you and I believe in Ben Simmons, we can't ignore the bizarre fourth quarter performances in the playoffs this year. And so he's gonna have to build that value back up. If I'm on the phone with you and you talk about give me a player and give me like two or three first round picks, not after that series. 
Like we mm. saw the Paul George deal, the Drew Holiday deal. Like there have been deals where multiple picks got exchanged, but not when they passing up layups in front of Trey Young at the hoop. So he's going to have to build his value back up. They're not going to want to move him for less. So don't be surprised if this goes into training camp, if it goes into the season before he's actually moved. Well, we will see what happens. I do believe he does get moved, but he